I had some knee problems when I was in LA when I tried it for the first time and that's called like local cryo. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it did anything. It's kinda like holding ba a bag of ice on there. Basically reduce inflammation a little bit and get your body to react to the stress of cold. Honestly I prefer an ice bath. It's more it's more intense. I feel like it does more. But this is this is different because it's like air cooled to where you would normally not find it, so it's kind of a bit more artificial, right? But every now and then it's a good thing to do, I think. The same with the sauna, just the other the other way around. Heat shock. After after a lot of training, I feel like my body, my muscles, my, even my skin, they, they kind of get a little bit inflamed. Um, I feel kind of sore, so I like to get in there and cool everything down and get an, uh, a response from my body. Uh, I do the same with the sauna actually, just um, at different times. Kind of makes everything a little bit more accessible and uh, Joe Rogan told me to do it, so that's why I do it. My, my motivation has always been to not have any regrets when I'm older. And that's why I have the kind of lifestyle that I mentioned before, where I've traveled around the world, I've seen everything, because I think that's one of the things people regret. And I know that there's nothing I would regret more than slacking in training and not finding out how good I can actually be while my body still allows me to do, to do so. Because time, time waits for no one, even though for most people I'm, I'm relatively young, I, I know that I only have a certain number of years where I can get my full potential out of me. So I would say around Purple Belt, I knew that I have to do, I have to do something. So um, that's why I also tra transitioned into doing stuff outside, off the mats, to, to help me be full-time in Jiu-Jitsu and to have access to the best training, the best recovery, the best everything, without, like, without having to ask people for it. Back off. Sometimes. <laughs> He's trying to get away, man. Trying to run. Looking for a small little button to pick up. <laughs> Dude, Jones again. <laughs> You're down, right? Yeah, I know. So my last match at Polaris was against uh, Keenan Cornelius for the 205 pound belt. That match was a rematch. The first one, he kicked my ass, and uh, this one was uh, much closer. So. It, was the, it went the full 15 minutes, so neither of us were able to get the finish, but I, I got the uh, decision, majority decision, I think based on the fact that uh, I controlled the match with a takedown and top heavy pressure. But yeah, it was uh, a much closer match than our initial one. And uh, luckily I was able to get the title out of that. Do it again. two years since I sort of reached some stardom with my ADCC run in 2017, the one in Finland. Uh, I was obviously very happy with that, but I was very worried that like a lot of grapplers, they get a big win and then they sort of fade away. They sort of become like a one hit wonder. So for me, following ADCC, I wanted to ensure I worked just as hard to make sure I can uh, keep that level of success in the sport. Two points. Oh, dude, can you see that over there? What's going on with that? My next Polaris match, I have Mateus Lutz, a grappler out of New York City, and he trains under Marcelo Garcia. So obviously Mateus Lutz had some very exciting matches. He's uh, been in the big shows for, I think, the last 12 months, and he's been doing very, very well for himself. He looks like a, he looks like a smaller version of Mateus Denise, but just every bit as jacked. So obviously I had a match with Mateus uh, Denise, so I'm expecting uh, something similar out of Mateus Lutz. This one's gonna be at 185 pounds, a weight division I haven't made since I had the Jake Shields title match. So it's been a while since I made that weight division, but uh, fingers crossed I get back down there. But yeah, very excited for this. Another uh, title defense at middleweight. Ow. What I kicking? Well, my head. just keep growing. <laughs> really been looking for matches with, you know, like the best of the best, uh, Paulo Miao, Gianni Grippo, Tanquinho, uh, like even Wagner. Uh, I love matches with all those guys.
Nikki came along you know, a few years after Gordon and started out training here and he actually hated me. Completely hated me. Uh, he was like, he came to Gordon, he's like, listen man, I only want to be there when, when you teach. Gary sucks, he's so mean to me. Or, uh, he's, he never has anything positive to say, whatever the case may be. And I'm just that way with my students sometimes. Specifically the ones that I see that have so much potential, I'm always a little bit harder on because I want to draw that out of them. Plus me, Gary, and Gordon used to. We all used to live within five minutes of the day. Of the way? Of uh, Brunswick. Yeah, you're uh, closer. Uh, so around two weeks beforehand, we're, uh, me, Gary, John, and Gordon are all flying out to Singapore to teach a uh, seminar. So out there, I'm going to be training with the guys from Evolve as well as uh, helping Gary prepare for his fights. So, you know, we'll be doing a lot of wrestling and things like that. Um, and then we're going to fly straight from Singapore to London to uh, compete. I think I'm really lucky to be with the, uh, the team that I have. You know, we have all world-class guys that have accomplished a lot in jiu-jitsu. You know, Gordon, Gary, uh, we have guys coming up like Ethan Krellenston, uh, Taza, a um, bunch of guys. Um, so, you know, I really am uh, happy with the, uh, the caliber of training that I've been having. Yeah, I mean, my whole life, like, I, I'm not like my brother at all. I'm like the least confident person, actually. Uh, you know, like, humble, quiet, I, I keep to myself, so. You know, you know, it's not like I'm blowing myself up because I'm winning matches. I love to compete. Uh, and I always want to go against the best guys. You know, I, my first jiu-jitsu match uh, was against Paulo Miao, who's a multi-time world champion. Uh, we had a great go. We went to like six overtimes and he had an advantage time on, on that match. Uh, the second one was against Sakuraba, a guy that I really looked up to and somebody that I was uh, a big fan of when I first got into this sport. I got to compete against him as a team against team format with Quintet and had an awesome experience with that. And then this last one, uh, during that Quintet experience, I got to know Gordon Ryan and Nikki Ryan and I just thought the world of both of those guys. I think, you know, the fact that Nikki has the dedication and the focus that he has and, and the all-in commitment, I love to see that. And, uh, you know, I feel like it's, it's, a, it's a very worthy opponent to, to go out there and, and play a sport that I love. So Nikki Ryan, was uh, along for the ride when his brother was at Quintet with us and he actually competed as well. Um, you know, we got to spend some time together and, and he's a humble kid. He's a very dedicated kid and, and I like his story, you know. He, he actually started doing jiu-jitsu to, to combat uh, being a, a chubby kid. You know, it was to get in shape and, and have some lifestyle changes and then he's an intelligent guy so it kind of consumed him and, and, uh, and became an all-in jiu-jitsu player. Um, I like that. You know, I had a chance to roll with him a little bit, and it was very apparent that this kid is, is for real. Uh, he, he, at the time, was you know, not really that big. Uh, I got a call recently, and they asked if we could go up a weight class for this, which means he must have hit some sort of growth spurt or something is going on. Um, and, uh, but this is for a belt at 145, so I said, let's just keep it at 145. He can, you know, push through the growth spurt at the moment. 